The towering slopes of fashionable Montenotti offer an impressive backdrop to Cork's Porky Cueve down on the city's marina, where Cork has not lost a senior hurling championship match since the stadium was opened 15 years ago. And today the venue sees the return to action of Pat Hartnett, twice an All-Ireland medal winner, whose last appearance was in 1988. He's been drafted into the champions midfield with Cahal Casey at wing back and John Considine recalled to cornerback in place of the injured Dennis Welch. By comparison, Tipperary named 14 of the 15 who played against Limerick in the semi-final. The vacancy at left half-back goes to Connell Bonner, who replaces the luckless John Kennedy. And in attack, Tip will again look to the leadership qualities of Cormac Bonner, whose goal before half-time in the last round was highly decisive. But undoubtedly the clash of Mark Foley, Cork centre forward and scorer of 2-7 in last year's final. And Tip's Bobby Ryan, who suffered the ignominy of being replaced in that game, is bound to command much attention. 36-year-old Terence Murray referees his fourth Munster hurling final. Terence, a Limerick man, of course, refereed the 1986 final in Killarney between Cork and Clare and the two Cork tip clashes in 87 and again in 88. It's going to be... Tip will play from left to right in the splendid theatre of sport, which is Porky Cueve. So it's underway, and it's Declan Ryan launching to Prairie's first attack. Richard Brown slipped thereby giving the space to Cormac Bonner. Blocked down by Brown, takes the shoulder, hand passed inside, Ryan making a move in there dangerously, this is a good opener, stopped, and it's finally Nicky English who's in there in the thick of the action, jostling for positions, John Lahey was coming in there on the left-hand side and the referee going in to defuse it quickly. Thankfully, unlike uh, other championship matches, not involving this pairing, there was no flare-up, and the referee going to throw the ball in between two players. Declan Ryan and Jim Cashman will be the two involved. Referee wanting Shorty McCarthy back, and Lahey. So tip pressing, Cork defending, as Pat Fox comes looking for the first score of the game. Space at a premium, nicely outside to Michael Cleary, he's put it over the bar, and tip have taken the lead. Michael Cleary from Era Ogan, Nina, the one who gets the first score of the match. An elusive, fast and decisive player, must be rated one of the most penetrating wing forwards about, with a really rich scoring sense. Jerk Cunningham here, celebrating ten years as Cork's number one goalkeeper. The wind, if there is a wind about, it's uh, slightly favouring Cork, but it's not particularly strong. Tony O'Sullivan, inside towards Ter Fitzgerald, it's stopped back there. Paul Delaney coming across. Formerly a wing-back, now a right cornerback into the centre of the field, taken over there by Lahey. High challenge by Pat Hartnett, still managing to get it through the centre. Jim Cashman coming to Cork's aid. Across towards Tomas Mulcahy's wing. Mulcahy been marked by Connell Bonner this afternoon. Bonner advancing. Joe Hayes whipping into it with the county of Cork. Considine, already a terrific atmosphere. Great competitive edge to the match, as Noel Sheehy refuses that one. Stopped by Brendan O'Sullivan in the middle of the field, one of the heroes last year for Cork. Attempting to play it forward to Pat Hartnett, batted out, however. Lahey, having lost the hurley, needing some support. Michael Cleary was there to assist him, Brendan O'Sullivan and John Lahey just getting to know one another in the opening two and a half minutes. So the outcome will be a Cork sideline ball. Well, a blistering start, Jimmy Barry Murphy. Jared, there's an unbelievable atmosphere here at the moment. Players are tearing into it, hell for leather, and uh, not asking any questions. And there's tremendous equipment on both sides, and it could be a fantastic game. Whipped up beautifully, John Fitzgibbon. Ken Hogan doing really well. Ball still loose, however. And the referee has whistled. Well, that was a chance there for Cork. On the greasy surface, Ken Hogan had to be decisive, came out. Showed great bravery following that line ball that was cut in there by Shawty McCarthy. Watches Fitzgibbon, nursed it away from Paul Delaney. Hogan did well to get down and stem the danger. Referee's going to throw the ball in. Hartnett and Carr, the two players involved. Really strong pulling. Bobby Ryan going forward. And Kevin Hennessy and Bobby Ryan then exchanging angry glances. No, she is saying, have a bit of sense. Ryan is the player who's been uh, spoken to briefly there by Terence Murray and Pat Hartnett obviously nursing a hand injury Gerald McCarthy just going in to look after the midfield player it's going to be a free in Antonio Sullivan from the Pearson will be the free taker sides are level 
his best ever tally in a Munster final was in 1982 when he scored 12 points against Waterford. Lovely style is Tony O'Sullivan and uh, you wouldn't expect him to miss from this angle and uh, while he hasn't been a consistent free taker in the past for Cork, he's taken the free three and uh, he certainly wouldn't miss from that angle. It's Cork with possession again, Jim Cashman sides tied up one point to face. Really driving it forward towards Ger Fitzgerald, Kevin Hensley going across there with Connor O'Donovan, O'Donovan who missed last year's final because of an injury, out only as far as Tomas Mulcahy, 20 metres out, referee says play on, and it's Noel Shea who takes it away, stopped by Mark Foley splendidly, whipped out by Paul Delaney, out into the centre towards John Madden, the dashing wing back from Laura, towards Pat Fox, who ran a good 30 metres to collect, falls down to Ryan, up towards English, and there with John Conson, I had a great battle last year, remember, McCarthy through the centre, on to Hartnett here, that's the 65 metre line, getting there ahead of Carr, it runs loose, John Fitzgibbon turning on his left-hand side, and he's put it over the bar. Fitzgibbon, who got two goals in last year's final, content with a point to edge Cork into the lead for the first time in the match with only five minutes gone. Jim Cashman trying to take it out of that rock of players. John Lahey, star minor in the 21 player, getting the measure of Shawnee McCarthy. Lahey dashing forward. Oh, the real stars against Limerick, second time in towards Cormac Bonner, stopped by Richard Brown. Bonner persisting, however, looking for a bit of support, again trying to bring some players into it. Brown has missed the last couple of championship seasons, out to Pat Fox, made a good run across from right to left, is it right? Yes, it is! It's over the bar, and it's two points each. So two points apiece, four points in all so far, Jimmy, and three of them, thankfully, coming from play. That's great to see, Jaron. This is an excellent point by Pat Fox in the opposite corner to where he's actually playing. Turns onto his right side and strikes the score from a very, very difficult angle. No time for delaying in this match. The puck's out coming in quickly. Joe Hayes towards Nicky English. Score of 11 points here two years ago against Waterford in the Munster final. This is from 40 metres out. Hangs in the breeze. Goalkeeper in full forward from Barney. And it's Cormac Bonner who made it just ahead of the goalkeeper, Jer Cunningham. And Bonner has pushed Tiff in front. Well, they led from the outside, Cork then took the lead, and yes. the last two points have come from Tipperary. Great catch by Nicky English, they're under pressure. I think he elects to try for a score himself, but it falls short in the wind, and Jerk Cunningham advances to meet with Cormac Bonner racing in on top of it, and tremendous note here, no player takes his eye off the ball, and Cormac Bonner takes a tremendous score. Whipped in there by Carl Casey. Now Brendan O'Sullivan on his left-hand side. Good-looking shot by O'Sullivan, well in there, Hennessy's inside, the goal! It's a goal by Kevin Hennessy. He's never scored in a Munster hurling final. He's a goal, I mean. He's got points, but never a goal. He's got one today. Well, an excellent delivery by Brendan O'Sullivan, who has started well for Cork in the middle of the field. And this is a testing ball for the tip full back line. And to be fair, this is the area that gave Tip really so many problems in last year's Munster final, and they've got to sort this out today. But it's a high dropping ball coming in from Kevin Hennessy. And an excellent cut, flick by Kevin to the back of the net. Meanwhile, back live, John Fitzgibbon very nearly in there with another little flick to try and beat Ken Hogan, but Hogan did well, he was fouled, and it's going to be a free out for Tipperary. So the position then, just uh, two points between the teams. 1-2 for Cork, that's five points, Tipperary three. But as I was saying, this is the one area that gave Tip such problems last year against Cork, and uh, if they're to win today, they'll have to get on top of the full-back line. And already John Fitzgibbon had a chance of a goal, Great save by Ken Hogan and uh, Kevin Hennessy didn't let that chance go begging there. Well, the game really starting in a welter of activity. That's Declan Ryan, down it goes. That's Fox. Ball held up on the greasy surface for Fox. And there's just one between them. As promised, it's turning out to be a great match. A great pick up by Fox here again. Cuts away from his marker, Sean O'Gorman. And while the opportunity was there to have a shot at goal, I think Pat did the right thing, took his point and uh, keeps Tip well in touch, just what they needed at this stage. In fact, Cormac Bonner was running out to meet that one, but the greasy surface and the damp conditions held up the pace of the ball. Meanwhile, Bobby Ryan whipping it out only as far as Tony O'Sullivan, trying to go around Declan Carr. Of course, Kevin Hennessy again, John Fitzgibbon now. Stopped by Paul Delaney, looking for support, getting it from Mark Foley. Closed down quickly, but he's found a gap inside Fitzgibbon, trying to go forward, it's still Fitzgibbon, and outside there's Jerry Fitzgerald, there's another goal! The champions with two goals in the space of three minutes! An amazing start 
Delighted Cork fans. Shocked temporary supporters, however. Well, thank you. Great play here again by John Fitzgibbon. Gets the ball back to Mark Foley under pressure. Foley juggles around with it a small bit. He's surrounded by temporary players. Elects the hand pass back inside to Fitzgibbon, who controls it well in the hurley again. Into his hand. Spots the loose man outside him, Ger Fitzgerald. And Ger stops an unstoppable shot to the right and corner of the net. Fantastic goal by Cork again. Donald Bonner, who burst on the scene in 1989. It was a great year for Tipperary, who won back the All-Ireland crown that season. Sean O'Gorman played so well in last year's All-Ireland final. Up to Cottle Casey has discarded the helmet. Really good-looking ball, high and over the bar. He was 65 metres out from his own goal when he hit that one. A huge point. Really well struck to open up the four-point difference once again. Tremendous play by Kyle Casey, gathers a loose ball in the middle of the field and a uh, fantastic strike, must have got 75 or 80 yards and uh, that'll be a great lift to Cork. The game has just gone a bit scrappy and uh, they'll be hoping to keep the ball going in a bit quicker and a bit faster to their forward end like they were doing earlier on. Jim Cashman, who cleaned up that centre-half back last year. Declan Ryan wants to do something about that this time. Tony O'Sullivan, smartly driven in. Towards Kevin Hennessy against Conor O'Donovan. Again, Kip looking at sixes and sevens and Ken Hogan having to come out. Tomas Mulcahy trying to go the Mo Dirac towards goal. Inside nicely, and it's another one for Joe Fitzgerald. A second goal for the Middleton man. Well, Tip, as you're saying, Jimmy, in real trouble in their full back line. Well, yeah, the Tip really under pressure. Every time the ball comes in, as I said earlier, Pop looked like an eight goal, and it's unbelievable. Tomas Mulcahy is working tremendously hard at right half forward. Wins a good ball here, rounds his man fairly easily, and has time to pick out Jerfus Sherald, who's standing all in his own inside there. And that's very poor defending by Tipperary, really. Ken Hogan is isolated, and Jerfus Sherald has no trouble in banging that to the back of the net. Sean O'Gorman clearing his lines. Joe Hayes comfortably under it. Sullivan slipping. Cahill Casey taking it with style, driving it out defiantly. Bobby Ryan going across. In a race for possession with Kevin Hennessy. Hennessy won it. But the ball has gone to a Tipperary man to Connell Bonner. Down towards Michael Cleary, who got the first point of this match. Cashman. Again, a very fine clearance up through the middle. Kevin Hennessy beginning to roam. Certainly dominating that battle with Conor O'Donovan so far. As uh, Ger Fitzgerald, the two-goal hero, watches that clearance from Ken Hogan come out towards Joe Hayes. Runs on to an unmarked John Lahey, getting away from his man just for a moment. The support from Declan Ryan if he needs it. It's still Lahey. What a great run forward, Nicky English. Well, they need a score badly, and Lahey might provide it. He's got the goal. John Lahey with a goal after 20 minutes. That's changed the picture. An injection of confidence now for Tipperary. Great goal by Lahey here, Ger. Uh, tip need a score badly, whether a point or a goal, and he races inside John Considine. Takes on John Cashman here again. Hand passes to Nick English, who looks as if he might have a chance for goal himself. But Cocker coding him, ball breaks loose. And in fairness, Lahey kept going, gathered the ball well and stuck into the far corner of the net from a difficult angle. Good goal by, tip, for, by John Lahey. Ger Cunningham's puck out. Ger today playing in his 36th championship match. Bobby Ryan. Well, Tip now will get a lot of heart from that goal from John Lahey, having been out of it. In towards Nicky English, stopped by John Considine. Fox is there, coming to Tip's rescue, setting up the pass inside here for Declan Ryan to advance and take his point. His first score. But now there's just a goal between the teams. Declan Carr, temporary captain, watching for Paul Delaney to come in with Joe Hayes here, half blocked down by Brendan O'Sullivan. Hayes trying to advance, Lahey making himself available, still Hayes. Nicky English as Considine has slipped. English in the clear then, chance of a first score here for Nicky English, steadying himself. And again, he's miscued. The angle was tight enough. Done his confidence an awful lot of good, but uh, 
he knows he just needs a score or two to find his rhythm. Well, indeed, Gerard, they have two great chances by Nicky English, and they could prove costly, but fairness to really, they've knuckled down well, they've battled themselves back into the game, and I think Nicky could even have taken that ball in a bit further and uh, try and commit more to the court defenders to come and tackle him. Mark Foley trying to break that one down, but only as far as Lahi, pursued by Shawnee McCarthy. Back to Bobby Ryan, minus the stick. Supported here. Connell Bonner comes to Declan Ryan. Over the head of Nicky English, on towards Cormac Bonner, providing the hand pass inside for English. The ace predator coming forward, went for the goal rather than the point, stopped by Jer Cunningham. Ten minutes to go to half-time, and it's 3-3 for Cork, Tipperary 1-6, translated into points, that's 12 against 9. O'Sullivan against Connell Bonner, with Lahey there too. Tony O'Sullivan dropping it in, batted out by Paul Delaney expertly, but now he has to run after it himself. Madden. Michael Cleary in the clash of the ash with Cottle Casey. And the linesman signalling that it's going to be a Tipperary ball. John Madden's the one who's going to take it. Played, I think, out of position last year at corner back. But in the league, he's moved to wing back where his talent has been given fuller expression. Lahi. Going away to the left hand side. Cormac Bonner pursuing it. the end it's going to be a 65 just quite an important score uh, 65 here now for uh, Tipperary in that they've had a few bad wides and uh, but they just need another point to keep them in touch and keep them hammering away at Cork's lead Michael Cleary is the taker and he's missed it score of two points so far but those are three misses now two by English and one by Cleary by no Shahi Connell Bonner so going back. Players having a lot of trouble holding their footing. It's Connor O'Donovan now. Stopped. John Fitzgibbon. Daylight robbery then as he picked that one up brilliantly. The back's closing him, however. Tony O'Sullivan. Space difficult to find here in Porky Pee. Kevin Hennessy going across. Bobby Ryan trying to close him down. And it's Hennessy has found the range for about 20 metres out. So Kevin Hennessy now the scorer of a goal and the point. And it's a good score here again by Kevin Hennessy, but in the build-up to that, that play, Declan Carr in the middle of the field had the ball on his own and struck about 10 yards on the ground where it's cleared right back into the Tipperary full back line. And Kevin turns onto his right hand and hits a good score, but it's noticeable that Tipperary are not settling on the ball. They're just that bit uh, jumpy in their play and Cork are all are quicker to the break and delivering the ball with better into the forward line. Once again, another fine run forward, but he needed the, the ball driven down fast. He didn't supply it. The inside forward stopped by Jim Cashman. Cleared forward upfield. Delaney. Up towards Fox. Another super catch by Pat Fox, who's been perhaps the best of the Tipperary inside forward so far in this game. Jerk Cunningham is getting out past Nicky English, has left it behind. English has got his first point of the match. It's something of a milestone as well in Nicky English's career as a hurler in the championship hurling because that is his 150th point in the championship. That's better play by Nicky English here. Comes in and uh, puts Jerk on him under pressure. Uh, Nicky slips actually as Jerk's about to clear, but he recovers quickly and hooks him beautifully. That's one of the great skills of hurling, a, a quick, clean hook where you can get a possession from your opponent. And Crocker lucky here that Nicky has some time to slot it in the net, but he gets, gets an excellent point. That'll do his confidence a lot of good, I think. Bobby Ryan. The referee terminates the first half. First half, where goals were the dominant factor, and Babs Keating goes in with a lot of work to do during the 10 minute interval to try and redress the situation, which sees Cork leading by four points. Goals by Jervis Gerald and Kevin Hennessy, and one goal for tip by John Lahey. So the score at half time here in Pork Equi reads Cork three goals and five points, Tipperary one goal and seven. So 3-5 for Cork, 1-7 for Tipperary. Straight away it's Connell Bonner, Joe Hayes here. Player down injured in the middle of the field, that's Pat Hartnett as the player restarts. Jim Cashman. So Pat Hartnett will need attention. Having picked up that injury right at the start of this second half. 
David Quirk, I think, David is Quirk where he's yeah. going to come in. There was a suggestion that Quirk might well have been in midfield uh, in the first place. All the speculation, of course, that goes on the weeks before the championship, as we're watching that shoulder by Hart, and he came off second best. Meanwhile, back under pressure, Sean O'Gorman clearing for Cork on this misty afternoon. Declan Carr driving it in, but driving it outside for Tipperary, the first wide of the second half. Bobby Ryan in front of an attendance of 46,927. Brendan O'Sullivan flashing in there with Declan Ryan. Ryan has uh, seen his hurley broken, needs a replacement. It'll be a free for Tipperary following all of that. Michael Cleary, the player who's going out to take it. No scores for either team so far. Half, which is now five minutes old. Well, he's gone for the point and he's put it over the bar. It's a fine shot. A long range free from the middle of the field, put over by Michael Cleary for his third point of the afternoon. Well, it's an excellent score by Cleary because, in fairness, he hasn't been playing that well and he's, he's missed easier flees in the first half, but under pressure he gets in a very, very important score for Tipperary. That puts him right back in the game, just a goal behind Park, and it's all to play for. Declan Carr bats it down. David Quirk trying to come across there. It went from Jim Cashman's stick out as far as Declan Ryan. And Jack Cunningham's in trouble, and Paul McBonner was in there raiding. Richard Brown there as well. Jack Cunningham, second attempt, picks it up, takes the shoulder from Pat Fox, gets out his clearance, however. Goalkeeper injured in the process. Tipperary under pressure, and John Madden copes with it very capably. Declan Ryan looking for a little bit of space outside to Madden again. Blocked down. Up to Nicky English with one point from the first half, but looking for another score. And what's been a disappointing match for him so far. As we say, just three points between the teams still. Well, John Madden blocked down initially, but again, fires a very good ball across the 21-yard line where Nick English advances to it. And the, in the past, this has been his classical situation, turning onto his right hand. But again, it just drifts off to his left-hand side and wide. Again, you know, these, are, these could be costly wise for Tipperary, but they're certainly playing in the game with greater fire and great equipment. And uh, it's, they should, they, they, they're, not, they're not all of this game by any means. Ten wides for Tip, five for Cork. Cahill Casey. Going to round Declan Carr across towards Mark Foley. Michael Ryan, the substitute. Mark Foley has yet to score in this match, not making the impression that he made last year. Cleary going forward. Rounding Cashman who slips. Still Cleary, a great scoring chance this for Tipperary, and Cleary has put it over the bar. And now there's just two points between the teams. This is a great run here again by Cleary. He started to put himself in John Lahey on the other wing. are starting to come into the game and uh, he races inside the court defence here and uh, Sean McCarthy just toiling behind him. And Cleary strikes an excellent point. Brendan O'Sullivan in there to Osmo Kahi takes it well. In dashing style, going forward, setting the pass outside to Mark Foley, looking for his first point of the afternoon. Still Foley, taken down, free. And so very near to being inside the large rectangle very very near to being a penalty well an excellent catch by Tomas Mulcahy just prior to that and he releases the ball to Mark Foley who turns inside the temporary defender and he's taken down well, very well won free for Crock and an important one as well but it's significant how Tomas Mulcahy is playing at centre, centre half forward where he's been so influential for Crock in the past year Tony O'Sullivan taps it over and opens up a gap of three points again between the teams Ken Hogan's puck out. Dropping in the middle of the field. Cahill Casey breaking it down, having to pursue it himself. Joe Hayes getting there first, however. Over towards Sean O'Gorman, the left corner back. Giving the shackles there on Pat Fox. Always a danger man for Tipperary. John Madden here, number five. Beautiful skill, taking it neatly. Cross towards John Lahey's wing. David Quirk is his marker now for the second half, remember, following the departure early in the half of Pat Hartnett. Pursued by Fox, by uh, Hayes, I should say. English involved in the move here with Ryan. Lahey, switch of wings, and the same end result for John Lahey, a fine score. So a point for John Lahey. 
coming across diagonally from left to right, involved in that intricate passing movement. Well, initially, good, good, very good hard working there by Nicky English, who, although he's not playing, things aren't going that well for himself, he's not hiding, he's certainly trying to get involved in the game. And he, in effect, he had played a very good score for John Lahey, but Nicky English certainly isn't hiding all the way. Things aren't happening for him, but he's trying to haul himself back into the game, and you know he could be a danger man for Tipperary yet. Tipper just within two points of Cork. Considine. What an engrossing championship match. Cahill Casey firing one in from way out the field, in towards Kevin Hennessy, dropping down towards Mark Foley. Chance for Mark Foley! Stopped brilliantly by Ken Hogan! On the goal line they wait, Fitzgibbon might have had a follow-up chance, but Mark Foley involved there in the Fisty Cups with Paul Delaney. It was a splendid save by Ken Hogan. Mark Foley might well have gone for a point, which would have been his first score in the game. Instead, he drove it in defiantly. Well, this could be a vital turning point. The ball dropping in here between Noel Sheehy and Kevin Hennessy. And the tip defender commits himself. Mark Foley gathers it beautifully with one hand and strikes it poorly with his left hand. But that's a fantastic reaction save by Ken Hogan. Never took his eye off the ball. And even with the clock forwards coming in on top of him, he, he stood his ground. And uh, it was a vital save for Tipperary. And uh, who knows, it could be a turning point. And just watching in reprise there, he was kicked as well on the ground. But he's back on his feet. And the crowd all around Porky Cueve responding. A change being made by Cork. And coming into the match in place of Brendan O'Sullivan. Seems to be uh, Pat, O'Sull Pat, uh, Pat Buckley, I think, has come in. Well, that's an interesting decision by the referee. The foul seemed to be on the goalkeeper. There was no free out. It's a free in instead. O'Sullivan's the taker and he's tapped it over the bar. That's a curious one. I can only interpret it, the referee saw the shot coming in, great save by Ken Hogan, and then he was on the ball, and presumably, Terence Murray said, didn't make an attempt to play it. It was mighty hard to do so. Well, that's a difficult one. As Michael Cleary coming out. And he's put it wide. But what do you make of that last incident there? The referee gave a free in. It might have been a penalty if he fell on the ball inside in the small right angle. Or if he picked it off the ground in the square, I'm not sure what the decision. I think it was the, if, if he picked the ball off the ground, Jerry, I think it's a 21-yard free, not a penalty. So it's going to be no Sheehy. Nicky English. Jim Cashman trying to command the situation there in the centre. Declan Carr was winding himself up for any loose ball that came out. Be a throw between the two of them. A really tough, tense Munster Championship match. Jeff Fitzgerald. Kevin Hennessy gathering delightfully against Old Sheehy, his new marker inside to Fitzgibbon, and he's put it over the bar. Lovely economical style from John Fitzgibbon after Kevin Hennessy did so much of the spade work with an excellent catch. Well, Cork has certainly made the most of the opportunities that are coming their way. This is an excellent catch by Kevin Hennessy again, and releases the ball just the right moment to John Fitzgibbon. It could have been blocked down, but he strikes an excellent point, takes his point very well. So four points the margin, Cork the leaders. Midway now through the second half. And the foul pulled that time, the referee going across, having a word there with Connell Bonner. Sir Fitzgerald has scored two goals in the first half, hasn't scored so far in the second half. He's now playing at right half forward. It's Mark Foley, top of the right, and Ger Fitzgerald, number 13 here, who is right half forward. Aidan Ryan might well be coming into the Tipperary team very shortly. So Dr. Con Murphy once again busy there, trying to attend to Ger Fitzgerald. So will the spray have the desired result free taken by Tony O'Sullivan the team captain Joe Hayes lets it drop down Bobby Ryan was right alongside him Connell Bernard Bonner trying to take it out of the defensive area Ger Fitzgerald fighting hard very near the sideline firing it across towards John Fitzgibbon wing over there with Paul Delaney that's come back down there to Pat Buckley the substitute has just come in a few minutes ago hand passing it back looking for a man coming forward that is Fitzgibbon they're working hard for a score it comes eventually off Michael Ryan from Mark Foley and somehow 
Buckley denied another 65. Tip almost coming to grief, not once, but a couple of times there. Well, another narrow escape for the Tip Reddy goal here. Jump is given his groovy turn, there's side time he gets the ball. Hand passes it past the area, Mark Foley tries to connect it in full flight. It deflects back into the pad of Pat Buckley, who's just come on the field, and Ken Hogan is lucky to out for a 65. But it, certainly, Jared, the problems from Tipperary's point of view is that Cork seems to be able to create more openings in front of goal and take their chances easier than Tipperary. They're find, Tipper finding scores very hard to come by. Dropped in invitingly. Noel Sheehy getting the early to that one. Battling away. John Fitzgibbon. Far again, and it's a goal! A goal for John Fitzgibbon. Two goals in last year's final. A goal and two so far for the Glen Rover star. It's a tremendous goal for Fitzgibbon. He certainly is the man of the moment where goals are concerned. Again, when the ball breaks, he's always the fastest player to react, and that's a tremendous ground shot, giving Ken Hogan no chance at his near post. 14 minutes to go. Cashman lets it behind, and Declan Ryan advancing, trying to set up the chance for John Lahey. Came off Sean O'Gorman, out to Michael Cleary, and put over the bar. Michael Cleary doing well at right half forward now again. Taking his chances, getting his scores, keeping Tip neatly in touch. They're far from out of it. That's an important point here for Tip, as you know, as you say already, just puts him five points behind. I think they'll need a goal if, to give them a little spark of inspiration that they might need. And who's to say if they get a goal, they wouldn't be back in the game. But the way Cork were playing, um, it's hard to see Tip winning. But if they got a goal, they'd certainly be in with a chance. Declan Carr. Fox can't hold it. Sean O'Gorman, this is uh, Aidan Ryan advancing, saying leave it to me, Pat Fox right beside him. Aidan Ryan still going forward, and he's put it wide. And it might have been wiser to leave it to Pat Fox. But obviously he fancied his chances. Tipperary have scored five points in the second half so far, caught the scorers of a goal and three points. Connell Bonner, beaten for it by Ger Fitzgerald, runs on to John Fitzgibbon. Or Pat Buckley, I should say. Buckley. And he's made a fine contribution by putting it over the bar. His first point since his introduction. Playing across on the same wing over there is John Fitzgibbon. Hawk fans delighted. Bob Skeeting has seen his side in with a shooting well below standard. Ryan. Score important here, and he's got it. He may have missed one a few minutes ago. He's got this latest one. So now it's back to more manageable proportions again for Tipperary. Here, here again, Aidan Ryan gets an excellent point off his left hand, but he missed an easier chance just before that, which would have kept Tipperary ticking over. But uh, a very good score, and it just keeps Tipperary in touch, but I still think they need a goal if they're to come back into this game. Declan Carr going across there, misses it completely. Pat Buckley doesn't. In towards the centre, Ger Fitzgerald trying to hold on to it, Connell Bonner trying to put it away from Oswald Cahy raiding, and finally in the end it's Michael Ryan, the substitute. Up towards Cormac Bonner, it runs on for Fox and there's a goal chance here for Tipperary, a crucial one at that! Ten minutes to go and Pat Fox has worked the oracle as he's done so often in the past. Well, great defending by Michael Ryan. He won the ball independent and cleared a tremendous clearance up the field. Cormac Bonner goes for Richard, Richard Brown, but the first player to spot it is Pat Fox. Tremendous corner forward play here. Races inside the defence. Advances on Jerk Cunningham and doesn't make any mistake from that. Tremendous shot and gave Cunningham no chance from that distance. Well, as always, these sides serving up a tremendous contest. Just two points the difference. Tipperary being led, but still very much in the hunt. The champions then under pressure. John Lahey. Whipped across towards Michael Cleary. Jer Cunningham advancing from his goal with just under 10 minutes to go. Plenty of time for either side to win this one and win, this, win it well. Declan Carr. A tight competitive match and we're looking forward to the last 10 minutes. It should be well worth watching. Richard Brown secure in his handling. Cahill Casey was calling for it, he was totally unmarked, likewise Jim Cashman. Cashman to the middle of the field, where it's stopped by Connell Bonner. Aidan Ryan driving it forward, on towards Pat Fox, 
delightful first touch going over there to follow it himself with John Considine going over to put in a challenge. Fox on the ground, the referee allowing an advantage if, if there was a foul. It's with Nicky English. English in typical style, bursting through, high challenge to the face. The injury to Nicky English, the referee with the notebook out. So it's going to be a free in. And the referee going across there for that high challenge by John Considine. An elbow to the face. A lot of elbows in Gaelic football and now creeping into hurling as well and it's something we don't like to see, Jimmy. No, indeed, and in fairness to John Constantine, he has played Nicky English very fairly and very clean all day and uh, there was no need for that, I don't think, but uh, in fairness to Nicky English, he didn't make anything of it, he got up as quickly as he could and uh, free for temporary. Teddy McCarthy is in and it's been put over the bar. Michael Cleary has scored seven points in this monster final and now the margin is just a point. John Madden under it over there with Pat Buckley, runs on to Declan Carr, the Tipperary team captain, through the middle, stopped by Jim Cashman. Dropping it down towards Mark Foley, who hasn't had the best of afternoons. That's John Lahey, half blocked by an injured and limping Cahill Casey. Nicky English coming out to make space for himself, lobbing it forward well towards Cormac Bonner. Trying to go by Richard Brown, Cashman came in with the challenge, the foul, the free, and this may be it. A chance for Michael Cleary to put the teams on level terms. Six and a half minutes on my watch, still to go. A very good pick up by Cormac Bonner, who's now starting to get the ball that he needed all through and wasn't receiving, and he's putting pressure on the Cork defence. Jim Cashman comes in there, it's hard to see, but maybe a harsh decision, I thought maybe he's a good shoulder. Four of the eight points from Michael Cleary have come from freeze. Uh, five, I should say. We now make it five of the eight. Come from Freeze. He's making his contribution, and the sides are level. Batted down by Jim Cashman towards Teddy McCarthy. Jim Cashman again. Under the dropping ball, Connell Bonner. Gets the second chance to knock it forward. Cahill Casey has played his part in what's been a superb example of Munster Championship hurling. Jim Cashman, that wonderful hurler at centre-half back. Dropping it outside there towards John Fitzgibbon, Paul Delaney, who's been tight in his marking all through this game and has needed to be against John Fitzgibbon. John Madden onto the loose ball for a Tipperary side, seeking to bring the Munster Championship Cup back to the Premier County. Well, they won here on their last Munster final visit against Waterford in 86. Can they do it again? It's Michael Cleary dancing through the Cork defence. The referee says play on. Cleary, I think, felt he might have won himself a free. At the end, it's gone wide. Under two minutes to go, the puck out's been taken very quickly as Michael Cleary picks himself off the ground. That was quick thinking by Jer Cunningham, out as far as Tony O'Sullivan. So who's going to win it if there's to be a winner today? Kevin Hennessy. Striking it from his right-hand side, and he's put it over the bar. A goal and two points for Hennessy. Just over a minute to go now. The Cork fans in jubilant form up at the Black Rock end of Porky Cueve. But now it's a chance for Tipperary to apply some pressure on the Cork defence and it's Nicky English going forward, he's lost the hurley, kicking it and he has put it wide. Nicky, Nicky English going in there to appeal having lost the hurley, Jimmy. Yes, Nicky scored a goal in this situation before, he boots it high. It, difficult to say but it might have gone over the bar from here. It's very, well, very Nicky is absolutely it's certainly looked like it went inside the post from here, but I just it's very difficult to say. I'd like to see it again. Here you see English lacing on to it. He has lost his hurley. I think it was over the bar. And here they go. Nicky just about to kick it now. Let's fly. He can just slow it down. It's just, it looks like there it's gone over the bar all right. Jerk Cunningham, his side continuing to lead by a point. When in fairness, Tipperary at least deserved a draw. O'Sullivan, stopped here brilliantly by Michael Ryan. Again, the pressure is applied by Kevin Hennessy. John Madden coming in. Only five seconds of normal time remaining on my watch. As we watch Noel Sheehy go way up the field from his full-back position, outside here to John Lahey. Can they draw on level terms? Will they even win it? Lahey stopped, however, by Considine. It runs loose, and there are players advancing on Jer Cunningham's goal. One of them is Lahey. Cunningham coming out. Still a pile-up in front there, as we watch Pat Fox try to take possession, and he's put it over the bar, and it's no more than they deserve. 
Oh, that's, that's, not, that's an unbelievable score. Looking at Noel Sheehy, I think he might have caught a Kevin Foley yesterday coming up the field and having a go himself. But he just released the ball at the right time and Pat Fox and Broke and Play took a fantastic point under pressure. Well, if you were a pacemaker, I hope you put a new battery in. A grandstand finish. We're well into injury time. Bob Skeeting wanted to make some late changes. Who'd be a manager? And it's going to go to a replay. They finish level, 22 points each. And Nicky English, I think, still perhaps feeling that he was robbed when there was a chance of a point just a minute ago. But when it came out here to Pat Fox, all the style and artistry as he rounded Shawnee McCarthy, got it onto his left-hand side, drove it over the bar to tie the game up at Cork, 4-10, Tipperary, 2-16. Tremendous sportsmanship, hardly a bad blow in the whole game, and it's a tremendous advertisement for hurling. And I think it's fantastic that the game went out live, that people could see just what the Monster Championship was all about. So the final score, Cork 4-10, 22 points, Tipperary 2-16, 22 points, they'll meet again, and Nicky will still wonder why that one didn't count.